Hello guys and welcome back to another Tweaker Man video. So I'm in between projects at the moment and I haven't uploaded for uh, over a week now. Um, I've been making a set of interconnects, very nice set, for a YouTuber um, who's going to um, hopefully show them on his channel. So um, he's, uh, he's an American in New York and... Um, I think he's going to be blown away by them but uh, we'll have to wait and see so I'm just in the middle of uh, still producing them uh, ready to um, send to him so while I'm doing that I thought I'd just do a, a video on uh, cassettes now I know they're not audio file by any means but I've got some stories and I want to just show you my blank cassette collection so uh, let's get into it I'll start with um, <clears throat> With uh, the way I got into cassettes was uh, in the very early days of the uh, early 80s. And um, I started off with uh, sort of JVC, I think it was, cassette deck. <clears throat> and then I gradually worked my way up. And then when CD first came out, I um I got my first CD player, which was a Marantz CD 45, I think it was, or is it a 40? I, I can't remember the exact model number of it. And I can remember plugging it in <clears throat> and thinking that CD sounded quite harsh compared to uh, LPs of the time. These were the early CD players. So um, I decided I would try something so it just was on my cheaper cassette deck at the time so I recorded a CD onto a cassette and thought to myself although it didn't sound quite as dynamic as a um, as a CD of the time it gave me that more analog feel so what I did is I saved up my pennies and I went out and bought uh, the top of the range AWA cassette deck. Not this one, but it was called an ADF 990 and I paid £599 for that back in 1986. I think it was 86, yeah. And uh, I trundled down to um, Tottenham Court Road in London. Oh, no, it wasn't. It was on the Edgware Road. Um, it was on the Edgware Road. It was, uh, they used to, they, in them days, they had shed loads of hi fi shops everywhere. And I went in there, all with cash, piled the cash over, and bought this lovely machine back. And then <clears throat> I started um, trying different cassettes. And then in the end, I, I hit on metal, metal position cassettes now when I recorded a CD from the from the CD 45 as I think it was called the Marantz onto a metal cassette through the AWA ADF 990 it sounded phenomenal I couldn't believe it it was absolutely great it gave you all that nice analog sound opposed to the edginess from the CD of the time so after that I still bought the CD but I bought a metal cassette now I've got some here still which I'm going to show you in a minute and uh, but I'll go through some of the ones that I used to use and I never went under metal after that I had so many so my CD collection every CD that I purchased had a metal cassette that went with it so I used to use uh, a lot of TDK, M-A-X-G. That was their top one. I used uh, Sony Metal Masters. I also used uh, that tape, which is, I've got a couple of those now. But I'm going to tell you a little story first. Um, <clears throat> I moved house once and um, I had all... The cassettes all stored really well in a cupboard under the stairs the, the the worst thing about cassettes is if you store them poorly 
they will uh, you, well you can get they can demagnetize and that they can have drop out and all sorts of stuff so i um i stored them under the cupboard all nice in, in i had loads of them in in boxes and um and then we decided we'd move and we moved house and uh we get to the next house and I'm, I'm unboxing all the hi-fi everything getting it into the uh the then AUB room of the house i was in and i couldn't find these cassettes couldn't find them anywhere so i said to the wife where's the cassettes she said oh no she said you said you weren't using them anymore so i took them to the council tip now i had over 600 metal cassettes and each one of those at the time was at least five pound each and we're talking about back in the um, mid 80s going through to i still kept on doing it actually right up till the early 90s and uh she chucked the whole lot away into the tip the whole lot went <clears throat> i couldn't believe it i was absolutely gobsmacked i mean it's not just that it was just the amount of passion and everything else that goes into collecting these things and uh you know what women are like well no, i shouldn't say that that's wrong oh you know what my wife's like oh just get over it so um that was that but let's move on and i'll show you some of the cassettes that i still have in my collection the blank ones so i, I don't have many of the metal ones anymore i managed to find a couple that i still had and they were in a in another drawer <clears throat> they wasn't uh, the ones that she chucked so these ones were particularly good i think you you pronounce that suno and these were their top that tape top cassette now these ones wasn't stored very well so they don't they don't sound very good anymore they're pretty poor um and then there was some max max l mx so these are just ones that were pre-recorded. These were the ones from my collection that got chucked. Well, there, there was four of these that I've managed to find that were never stored away properly. So those are those. And then let's move on to all the sealed cassettes that I still have. So I'm going to start with some of the common brands of the day. Um, so these are Fuji. So this is a... Uh, type 2 cassette which is uh, double coated now these used to sound pretty good um, and then we've got a uh, more of a basic uh, chrome there and moving down here is a type 1 which is a ferric tape cassette so this is my Fuji collection there and then moving over to TDK, so I've got there, if you can see, well this is the uh, FE, which was their very basic cassette. <coughs> and then you move up to the D. Now you'll be surprised how good these Ds used to sound, and not even now I've recorded on a D. And it's pretty good. Um, so there's three different generations of those. And then we come down to here. And we've got some AD, which was the next up from the uh, from the D. And then we've got some SFs, which were chrome. These were heat resistant, apparently. And then we go on to one of the most popular tapes of the day, which was a SA90. So this is one of the later generation SAs. And yeah, I've got a stack of Ds there. And then another stack of these there that's never been opened. Well, these are all sealed anyway, but this is a uh, like a promotional set there. <clears throat> and then we're going to move on around here. And this is my Maxell collection, which is uh, SQ Super Quality. That was a Type 2 Chrome. Then you've got a UD2 CD. So these were the the the, the, um, the more newer generation of uh, chromes and we've got some basic ferrics there you are 
which were very basic <clears throat> and then we move around to here now this XL was a very uh, XL 2S was a very nice cassette sounded really well and so did the SX2 <coughs> sorry I've got a bit of a dry throat this morning and then we're going to move on to BASF so this one here this Chrome Super 2 was a very nice looking cassette also sounded really good so occasionally I would record onto a, a, a chrome cassette but I mainly stuck to metal depending if I was putting it in a Walkman I'd never used my metal cassettes in a Walkman ever I only used them in a uh, in my cassette deck and uh, much a surprise to uh, a lot of you is I never ever had a cassette queue up in my any of my cassette decks I've always kept them clean and we'll come on to that in a minute uh, kept the heads clean kept the pinch rollers clean yeah really looked after them well and then we come over to here to the Sony's now I had a lovely collection of the Sony Metal Masters and do you know what now they go for a lot of money on eBay even the used ones so, uh, <clears throat> and then moving on to a make now, that are actually LG now. So, LG used to be called Gold Star, but now they're called Lucky Gold Star. That's what LG stands for. Now, this was a, a pretty nice sounding chrome position cassette, and I still have loads of these. these all this collection dates back to the... Um, well, it goes from the 80s right up to the probably the mid to late 2000, uh, uh, 1990s. So, and then, uh, <clears throat> right, so they're all the, the, the main brands. I'll move on to some, some other types now. So here we have a Memorex, which was actually quite a popular brand of the day. And so there's a, a Sony, uh, a Philips. These are... Um, these are all ferric and we move on to some uh, bush then this was an interesting make Tudor it's a chrome mark 2 now some of these chromes are cheaper ones I think are cobalt doped I think that's what you call them and other ones were pure chrome so I'm not entirely sure I was really up on it in the day and now I can't remember but uh, then we've got this make, SKC, I'm not sure. Some of these are foreign, I think. Or I say foreign, not not uh, not, not known to uh, this country, which is the UK that I'm in. Um, then we've got some Bush. I mean, these were, I think these were pretty, uh, they say they're super ferric. I can't remember what they sound like. I haven't recorded on one for a long, long time. And then we've got, these BBC which are I think they might be the same product as that um, as I say I was up on them but not anymore and then I've got this interesting make here XL studio grade now they a lot of the uh, cheaper ones used to put silly names on them like studio grade and stuff like that just to make them sound like they're really top quality but um, yeah interesting <clears throat> and, and these all a whole range of cassettes there that I've already recorded on now some of these I use out in the studio out there so I've got shed loads of stuff oh here's a here's an M MAX so I have got one of those still a TDK MA oh MA sorry not MAX MA um, yeah there's, there's there's endless stuff here right I'm going to show you a, I've still got a sealed cassette never played never opened and uh, someone give it to me so don't judge me for what's on this cassette so here we have Christy Berg the power of 10 never been opened it's still sealed I think it was one of my customers that gave me it interesting I should open it at some stage and this is that's actually a chrome chrome cassette there I think so Dolby B noise reduction so as far as noise reduction is concerned I mean if you go onto some forums about cassettes they uh, 
some of them don't even use noise reduction. Some of them, I mean, some of the, the, the better cassettes are a lot less hissy than others. So, um, so I generally just stick to Dolby B myself. Um, you can stick, you can go up, I mean, the, the C, and, and one of the other decks that I've got in the loft has got Dolby S on there as well but sometimes it takes the uh, top end away a little bit but um yeah there's end of stuff there's th this is a, a very cheap and nasty cassette there that's the type that are chew up in your system um so i'll show you some cleaning stuff now so a lot of uh, people say you should use isopropanol alcohol on your cassette heads i've never used that found it it can dissolve cassette decks so uh cassette heads over a period of time and uh, lighter fluid this swan lighter fluid is the best product and the reason i know this is because one of my cassette decks went wrong at one point and i had to take it in to uh, get it repaired and the engineer really knew what he was talking about and this is all he used to clean heads so i've only ever used that since on some cotton buds and uh, it really works well um, don't use it on the pinch rollers. I tend to just use a very light washing up liquid solution. I usually use the uh, the pure one, which is a environmental friendly washing up liquid, so it doesn't have any uh, harsh cleaning agents in it. Uh, and then moving down here, we have a D mag, which is uh, for de demagnetizing your heads. And this this is a very nice product. Um, it works really well as well and I use this there you go there's a little battery in there as well you might need to change at some stage a little circuit board there but I've um, never changed that yet I've had this quite a few years so and then there's a, a head cleaning cassette I find these probably a bit harsh to use so I don't tend to use those what I do is I clean the heads but not not lately I haven't used the, the deck at all this current one um, and then this is an interesting cassette <laughs> this one here it's got like brushes on the bottom of it it tends to work well you can put the you can put some cleaning solution on the, especially on these bits here for the pinch rollers that works quite well on the pinch rollers um, I only use uh, distilled water when I mix up the uh, it's, it's very similar to what I'd use for cleaning LPs no no isopropyl alcohol i just don't like that stuff i tend to find it uh, ruins things over a period of time so this current deck that i bought in here i purchased this brand new so what happened was is uh the ad the adf 990 i upgraded the cd player eventually to a, a marantz 65 or 63 i think it was Mark II Special Edition, I think it was. It wasn't the KI version, it was a Special Edition back in the uh, early 90s to mid 90s, I think it was. And at that point, uh, that didn't sound nowhere near as harsh as the early CD players of the day. So then I stopped recording onto cassette. And then eventually, um, I sold it to a friend of mine I virtually give it away like which was a bit sad really and now those machines on eBay go for quite big money and I don't know what he did with it but he doesn't have it anymore because I asked him <laughs> and uh, and then I <clears throat> I thought I'd, I'd have a tribute to the cassette still so I went out and bought this model which in hindsight now I wish I'd have bought a better model again now and well, I wish I hadn't have sold the original one that I had but uh, this one I bought from a, a hi-fi shop which is no longer there called Hi-Fi City in Watford in Hertfordshire and uh, I think I paid 200 or 250 for this one and uh, it's relatively sort of it's a free head so it's still it's still it does sound quite good still really for a cassette we're not talking audio file by no means and uh, I never quite ever got to the stage where I could afford a Nakamichi Dragon which one day you never know, but they go for stupid money on uh, on eBay now. And uh, I've got a friend who's got quite a few different uh, cassette collections, cassette deck collections. Um, you know, so 
I'll go around and have a tribute to those now and again. But uh, I think I think that's about it for this video. So um, this may not be for the audio file community out there, but I keep getting people saying to me, "Why don't you do a video on cassette?" So this is my attempt at it. So I hope you like this. Um, I feel a bit depressed this morning because my football team last night we were second in the league and then we. Uh, we capitulated yesterday against Sheffield Wednesday and they were 3-0 up in the uh, in the first half anyway we came back to Manchester we, we came back to three, uh, for 2-3 because we were playing at home and now we're in third position so we're in the playoffs and we need automatic promotion so but anyway I, I won't burden you with those problems of mine <laughs> so thanks for watching another tweaker man video if you're new to the channel don't forget to subscribe don't forget to give this video a like don't forget to press that notification bell so you're notified every time i upload a video and thank you for watching guys